Another story told entirely in free body diagrams. This one is the story of a skydiver, nothing weird, a totally normal skydiving trip, nothing gone crazy. The first stage of the voyage is of course falling out of the plane. The dude is falling and uh, and he's probably speeding up, right? He's falling down and speeding up. So what forces are there on the guy? Obviously there's gravity, down, we'll call it a G. And are there any other forces? Yeah, sure there are. In real life, there's going to be some air resistance, which is going up. And I'll call that F, air. And those are going to be basically the only two forces on the dude the whole time. Well, actually, I guess that's a lie. So near the end, there will be another force when he comes in contact with the ground. So, F, G at first is bigger than F, air, and that's why, of course, he must be accelerating down. He's also going down, so I don't usually indicate the direction of motion on a free body diagram, because free body diagrams help us to figure out F net and which way something is accelerating. They don't always tell us which way things are going, but I think in this case it'll be instructive to understand which way he's moving. He's moving down, he's accelerating down, and of course, therefore, he is speeding up. Speeding up. So that's a piece of cake, I guess. He's falling and speeding up. The next stage, of course, as he falls faster and faster and faster, the wind gets stronger. The wind that he feels going up, the air resistance grows. So eventually he's going to reach this thing called terminal velocity. And what's terminal velocity? Well, obviously there's gravity. And gravity hasn't changed from before. So I'm going to do a little Carl Wannemark. I'm going to do a little slash there to show that these two forces are the same. Gravity's not really changed, not much anyway. Okay, so that's fine. And then he, of course, is going faster now, so his air resistance is much bigger. His air resistance is going to grow until it is equal to gravity. Now, F air equals gravity, and therefore the acceleration of the guy is zero. And that's why he has a constant velocity. His final velocity, his velocity will stay constant until something changes, until he hits the ground, if he doesn't have a parachute. Anyway, B is still certainly down. He's moving at a constant velocity, terminal velocity. Uh, I don't really need this little uh, cartoon diagram of the dude, but the little dots are farther apart. He's going faster. Okay, fine. What's the third step of the voyage? Obviously, there's still the mass. There's still gravity. That goes without saying. Gravity still hasn't changed. So I'm going to put a little slash in there. We've got gravity. Now he's going to open his parachute. After falling at terminal velocity and having fun for a while, he's going to open his chute. Open his chute. And that's going to mean that the air resistance gets quite a bit bigger. So here's my little dude. He's got his chute open now. He's got these ropes going to his parachute. And there's his parachute. Good diagram. Anyway, F air is clearly bigger than gravity, so he's going to be accelerating up, but he's still going down. And this is an important point here. Students often think that when he pulls the parachute, he goes up, but he's not. He's still moving down, but now he's accelerating up. So I could point out that he is slowing down, but he is still going down. Still going down. I think one of the problems is in the movies when people open their parachutes, the camera is falling with the dude who's skydiving. And when the person pulls open their parachute, the camera keeps falling at terminal velocity. And so from that perspective, it looks like the guy on the parachute goes up when you're watching the movie. But he's not actually going up, he's still going down, he's just not accelerating down. He's slowing down, but still going down. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. After a little while, he gets to the fourth stage. Fourth stage looks a lot like the second stage. Gravity is, of course, the same. And now air resistance is equal to gravity. And gravity hasn't changed, so the air resistance must have gotten smaller. Why does the air resistance get smaller after he opens his parachute for a while? Here's the dude with his parachute open. And I'm going to draw his parachute as kind of wider and more relaxed because it's not working as hard anymore because he's not going as quick. That's the real key here. He has lost a lot of speed and the air resistance is proportional to your speed or technically your speed squared. So now the air resistance is zero. The speed is still going down. 
So take a second and look at diagram two and look at diagram four, and I think you can see that the diagrams, for all intents and purposes, are exactly the same. But what's the fundamental difference between two and four? There is a fundamental difference. Once, of course, he has a parachute open, once he doesn't. But the forces on him are the same, and his accelerations are the same. What's the actual difference? The difference is the speed. In diagram four, his terminal velocity, if you could call it that, his speed that he's reached is way, way smaller. Okay. So how come the air resistance stops getting smaller? He opens the parachute, the air resistance is huge because it has a lot of area. He starts slowing down. And as he slows down, the air resistance starts shrinking as he slows down. And eventually, if it equals gravity, how come it stops shrinking there? How come it doesn't get any less than gravity? I think, I hope you can see that if air resistance got less than gravity, then he would start speeding up again, and that would make his air resistance go up. So in real life, it probably does bounce up and down a little. If he speeds up, if he slows down, he reaches kind of an equilibrium. So that's pretty neat. He's cruising along now at a nice slow speed, slow enough that when he hits the ground, he's not going to hurt himself. And here's a place where kids commonly make a mistake, so I'm going to skip over to the last diagram. Here's the dude. Gravity obviously hasn't changed. He's sitting here. And now he's sitting on the ground and the normal force is equal to gravity. He's sitting there happy. Acceleration equals zero. V equals zero. If I drew a little diagram of the dude, here he is. Big smiley face. He survives his little adventure. But this can't be diagram five. This can't be diagram five. On the ground. Safe on the ground. Safe, so, okay? This can't be diagram five because you understand that you can't go from moving to at rest without something happening in between. Something has to happen. Something has to cause it to accelerate, to slow down. And that's, of course, step number five. But what is that? He's cruising down at a constant speed with his parachute up. And then what happens when he hits the ground? After he hits the ground, he feels normal and safe. But there's a minute there, isn't there? A second there, where he hits the ground, where his legs are like, Wah! and he's like, Wah! Wah! Okay? and what's happening there? Obviously, there's still gravity, but he feels really heavy, right? He feels like the floor is pushing up on him really hard because that's exactly what is happening. The normal force. It's too big, it's bigger than normal, <laughs> but it's not called the normal force because it's normally equal to gravity. It's called the normal force because it's 90 degrees normal to the surface. Okay, okay, okay. Normal force temporarily is going to be bigger than gravity, and that's going to cause him to accelerate up. He is still going down, isn't he? Even though he's touching the ground. I'm still moving down, but I'm touching the ground. So he's still moving down, and so he's slowing down. He slows down until he stops, and normal force drops to equal to gravity once he stops, because he's just sitting there. The normal force is only as big as it needs to be to stop him from sinking through the floor. 